everybody. It's me, Garrett Everett from Garrett Everett Blackwater. Uh, today I'm going to talk about the substrate that I use. I get a lot of questions about it because uh, it does look very unconventional, very different from a lot of other aquariums that you might see. Uh, it's definitely not clean. It's definitely very messy and uh, full of gunk and uh, all that good stuff that uh, really provides uh, the fish a place uh, that's very close to the home that you find them in nature. Um, this is going to be for a brackish mangrove estuary setup. I'm starting it off freshwater. Uh, I'm going to be keeping some live bears in there. I'm hoping to get some wild Montezuma sword tails. Uh, if that doesn't work out, uh, I might get some killer fish, something like that. Something that will really appreciate um, not only the brackish content of the water, which would be very low because I still like to keep some plants in there, maybe java fern or something. Um, and uh, it's also going to have to appreciate the hardness of the water because uh, I will be using uh, some various substrate enhancers and uh, aragonite sand and uh, sea salt in general just increases the hardness of the water. Uh, so without further ado, let's take a look at this. It's not going to be pretty because uh, this is my basement workshop, but uh, hopefully it'll give you a good idea of what I use to make my tanks uh, the best possible home, I think, for my fish. Okay, so let's start with the soil. Uh, this is a matter of contention. You can use uh, like a brand name aqua soil, like ADA Amazonia, that kind of thing. Uh, there's several different products there. I don't use them, so I won't get into them. There's plenty of people who know what they're doing uh, with those and can explain their properties a lot better. Uh, so this is just uh, honestly regular old garden soil that I got from my garden center. Um, when it comes to using soil in your aquarium, you kind of have to make sure yourself that uh, it's, it's safe, it's pesticide, herbicide uh, free, additional fertilizer free. Uh, you, there's several ways to do this. One, you can just buy a bag of organic comp or organic soil. Uh, make sure it says organic on there and that will be guaranteed to be free of any of that nasty stuff. Um, I'm kind of going with my gut here and saying that it works all right. We did use this in our garden. Uh, it seemed to work out. Nothing got burned. So uh, the other thing I've done and that you'll need to do with any soil uh, is to remineralize it. So there's two ways to do this. Uh, the Probably the faster way of doing it is soak all the soil for a bit and then you dry it out. And uh, basically you want to keep the soil uh, damp so that bacteria can work on it and break down any organic material that might be still existing in there. Um, so you go through this process of washing it, leaving it damp, drying it out, wash it again, leave it damp, etc, etc. And that will remineralize it and make it so that the minerals and nutrients that are in this soil will be perfectly usable by your aquatic plants. Uh, the other thing you can do is just throw it in your aquarium. Let it sit there. It'll sort itself out. Uh, this is less desirable. You might get more incidences of algae breakup. One nice thing about the mineralization process is that it makes nutrients easier for plants to use and more difficult for algae to use. Uh, so you'll want to want to do that probably, but you can just throw it in there and see what happens as long as you've got something that you feel is safe. Um, so right now I've got it damp. It's a little bit wet. There's a little you can see a bit of water in there. Um, I've tried to drain most of that out uh, just for filling. You don't want slop. You want something you can kind of mold and shape and push around. Um, what I did to remineralize mine is I left it outside and forgot about it. So it rained, the sun was out, the wind was out, there were bugs in there. Uh, somewhere in here, I don't know if you can see it. Oh uh, yeah, here it is. Kind of hard to see, but that's actually a robin's egg. So somebody used it for a nest. It means that there's probably bit of bird poop in there which isn't all bad uh, so this has been hypothetically remineralized using the power of nature this was left out there for I would say probably almost a year um, so that's maybe a bit longer than you want to wait for your your aquarium setup uh, next on get some substrate enhancers uh, so this is red clay I use Amico self hardening clay uh, this is recommended by a friend of mine uh, and it's really, um, I've used it in other aquariums and it's really great. It's high in iron content. Uh, the nice thing about clay too, it's got, it's got a high cation exchange capacity, which basically means that it's charged to attract and bind with uh, other minerals, uh, such as calcium, magnesium, 
iron that'll all get trapped in the clay and be slowly released later so the plants can't just like eat it all up and say okay i'm out of nutrients it kind of is a slow release so if there is excess in your aquarium it should be trapped in there uh, not guaranteed all of it but uh, it'll do a good job and then those nutrients will be released later uh, which is really nice so what i've done here you can either dry it out because it is self-hardening clay so you make little balls dry them out and you can crush them out into a powder that's probably the best way to go about it what i've done here is i've mixed in uh, a lot of water and just let it sit so this has been sitting uh, it's got to sit for probably five days to get fully saturated you get in there you mix it up you chop it up every day uh, now i've got a nice slop that is kind of there's a few chunks in there but that doesn't really matter so you want something that you can pour um, spreadable or you can even just uh, roll it up in balls and just tuck it in there like any root tab um, other uses for clay cat litter use some common sense uh, don't get the scented stuff. Uh, one thing you should be aware of with cat litter is that it does have baking soda, so that'll increase the carbonate hardness. Uh, your plants will appreciate the carbon, but it might make your water a little too hard, especially if you're trying to keep an authentic black water environment uh, with low hardness, low pH. So you might not want to use that. I've used it in several aquariums. I really like how it works. Uh, it does make a bit of a cloudy mess whenever you disturb it, but uh, kind of like with the soil, if you let it soak for a while, let it remineralize. Do, do a big water change uh, after you initially introduce it. It'll be fine. It'll sort itself out. Um, cat litter is also used... As a clarifying agent uh, which is kind of counterproductive to whatever I said there but a lot of people use it in their koi ponds if they've got green water or something they throw it in there um, it basically binds because of the vacation exchange capacity it binds with anything that's floating in the water falls to the bottom the koi eat it it's good for their digestion because it, it purifies whatever's going on in their body and then they poop it out then you just scoop it out during the water change um, I don't keep koi but hey if you got goldfish or something big outdoor pond uh, might be worth checking it out other stuff that I'm using here this is dolomite uh, not like the 70s black exploitation film uh, but this is basically uh, it's a special mineral it's really high in calcium and magnesium it's similar to lime and limestone but not quite so don't use lime because that'll that'll really be bad for uh, the alkalinity and uh, could potentially harm your fish. I don't know if you've ever breathed in lime. I have. It's not fun. You don't want to do it. Uh, so this will be spread. This is about two kilograms here. I'm not sure how much I'm gonna use, but I'll just sprinkle it around and it'll provide a long-term supply of magnesium and calcium for the plants, which is essential for them to grow. That will really complement the iron that's found in here. Um, there's another mineral that you can find called glauconite. I haven't been able to track any down, and I just really want to get this tank going, so I'm not finding it. Glauconite is important. Uh, it also provides magnesium, but it also provides uh, potassium. So what I've done, a little bit of a gardener's secret here. This is dried banana peels. I'm not sure if this is going to work, but I don't see why not, because we're basically making aquatic compost here. So I dried banana peels, ground them up. Banana peels are high in potassium and in magnesium. So we'll mix that in with the soil, uh, cap it off with sand. Um, because they're already dried, there's not a lot of sugar going on in there, so we shouldn't have any problems with algae or anything. But uh, we're going to leave the fish out of this for a while anyway, so we'll see what happens. I'm hoping to get stuff. Uh, another thing here. So this is coconut fiber. I'll just net some out for you here. This is what I really like uh, to bring out the natural look in the bottom of it because it's just decaying plant matter. Uh, the coconut takes a long time to, to, uh, to break down, so it's going to be in there for a while. It's not going to just turn into dust and, and blow away in the wind kind of thing. Uh, so what I recommend using, uh, and what I use is reptile bedding, uh, specifically, get on there, Zoomed reptile bedding. It comes in a three pack these bricks. Half a brick was enough uh, for a 20 gallon and a 30 gallon. So um, I've thrown a whole brick in here. I don't know if I'll use the whole part. I might mix some of it in with the soil and spread the rest on top. Uh, but it really adds to that kind of the, the detritus and the malmy look. So what you'll do with this is you'll just put it in a bucket like I did here. Ooh. And then over a couple of hours it'll, it'll break down uh, and expand and then you just leave it there. Once again, this has been here for maybe four or five days uh, and it just saturates and sinks to the bottom. Uh, whatever's floating here on top, you can just net it out. 
you can see already that's a lot waterier. Uh, this floating stuff, throw it in house plants or something. Uh, coconut's great for retaining moisture. You don't really need that in an aquarium, but uh, it is great for your house plants. So you can even use the waste of this stuff. Uh, the water also gets like this beautiful dark color. So you could save that for extract. Um, I don't know if I will or not. I probably will just dump it, throw it in the compost or something. <coughs> uh, something that is important, and I did say uh, that I use reptile bedding. Uh, don't just get coconut husk that you can find at your garden center. Uh, the nice thing about reptile bedding is because they want it to be super safe for your pets, uh, they will uh, make sure that it's got as low salt, salt content as possible. Whereas garden center stuff may be a bit higher in salt, you really don't know. Uh, but the, the reptile bedding itself is, uh, is guaranteed to be low salt content. Uh, I think you can get several different varieties. I get fine. Um, you can also get, I think there's like a medium and a large grit or something like that. Um, I know that some companies sell uh, coconut husk. Uh, Tan and Aquatics sells a product called Coco Curls, uh, which is a bit larger. And so if you if you get a couple of these things and just kind of mix them together, you'll get a really nice, natural-looking uh, pile of detritus in your tank. Uh, coconut is also a minor source of potassium. Because it breaks down so slow, it probably won't really affect your, your, your nutrients that much. But uh, it is nice if you mix it into your, into your soil. Uh, it'll just be that added long-term nutrient release. Now because this is a brackish setup, I'm going to be using live sand. Uh, live sand has all kinds of benefits for your saltwater aquarium. Because I'm starting out freshwater, I'll probably lose it, but I'm not too worried. As you can see, I got this at the thrift store, 10 bucks which is a steal of a deal, although you don't know where this has been stored or how long it's been stored, and I've definitely had it for almost a year, so I would say that anything that might be in there, beneficial bacteria, microfauna, probably toast. But it does have uh, the authentic look of sea sand, which is gonna be great, because this is supposed to be like a coastal setting. So I feel like it's really gonna add to the tank, uh, tank's appearance and the kind of genuine thing. There is aragonite in here, uh, and other minerals so it's going to make the water a bit harder once again if you are doing a black water setting you probably don't want to use this what you want to use instead is play sand um, so i've got a bag here this is i believe it's actually it's either play sand or jointing sand so you can get it colored so this is red uh, i've used this in my other black water tanks because uh, they're both asian themed and there seems to be a lot of red clay, uh, red mud, red minerals uh, that are going on. Play sand is what you want. You don't want traction sand. You don't want construction sand because uh, those have sharp edges. You want play sand because it's been rounded out, smoothed out, uh, usually found from, from the river or the ocean or whatever. Um, and it won't damage your fish if they swim into it, especially if you've got something like quarry cats. Uh, you don't want those guys digging around, scraping the barbells off on... Uh, on sharp edges you want this rounded river sand um, if you do get play sand this colored stuff uh, I think has like an epoxy on it so you don't really need to rinse it you can if you want uh, the natural look river stuff I would recommend rinsing that because it does carry a lot of silt uh, and mud with it and will cloud your water or you can just throw it in there uh, do a bit massive water change after everything's set up and uh, you'll probably be good it might be kicked up a bit uh, by fish or somebody rummaging around um, I believe that's everything. So what I'll do is I'll mix the soil, mix uh, mix all of the nutrients, substrate enhancers, uh, put a bit of coconut fiber in there, cap it off with the sand, uh, which I'll be mixing in. I've got a bit of red and I've got a bit of yellow stuff, so I'm hoping that gives a really nice beachy look. Um, and then uh, Bob's your uncle, fill it up with water, uh, let the nitrogen cycle go, and uh, crank out a tank.